10-year-old George gets up early every morning. He needs to run through his exercises before he can move without pain. As a parent, it's horrible to see your child suffering and being in pain. So when he gets up in the morning and he's stiff and he's doing his physio, I find that really hard. It has to go forward ten times and backwards ten times. If I don't do it, it I won't get any stronger and I won't be able to cope with the pain. It makes you feel like, oh, it isn't fair, why does it have to be me? George has been diagnosed with chronic pain syndrome and is currently undergoing medical investigations for arthritis. Despite being only 16, Eli already has a full-blown version of the disease. I wake up and often my hips are like very, very painful. So I have to like move them over and then get out of bed. It's then when I start walking, like properly walking to school, and then starts to up again. Yeah, and then it starts getting more painful. We tend to think of arthritis as a condition that afflicts only the elderly. But in fact, the problem's far more widespread, affecting even the very young. As many as one in a thousand children in the UK suffer with conditions like this every day. Juvenile idiopathic arthritis can affect any person, any child um, under the age of 18. You can be diagnosed as young as three. The symptoms that a child will present with are hot, swollen joints um, that are painful, um, and that can be in the elbows, in the knees, all over the legs, um, and it can be in a multiple uh, locations on, on the body. The inflammation is caused by confusion of the immune system. Uh, it's there, the immune system is there to protect us against viruses and bacteria, but in places like the joints where it doesn't normally see viruses and bacteria, it can get confused, and so it starts to attack the lining of the joint, which then causes swelling and stiffness of, of the joint, and then causes the disability as a result of that. No one is sure what triggers the disease that shuts down youthful agility, and doctors are still debating whether it can be inherited. But there's no uncertainty about the impact it can have on a child's life. Everything locks up and throws up at my feet. Uh, it gets very painful around here, and putting my foot on the ground can hurt here and here, and it's like lots of little parts in my joints just going cracking and unlocking and locking and all that so yeah I'd say it's a lot to do with cracking and the pain involved in that. We remember the first year of his life don't yeah. we when he was yes, yes. very much a, a child who really just cried for most of the first year of his life. Eli has suffered with poor health from birth but his mobility problems only became apparent when he was eight years old. By the time we actually got, got him properly diagnosed he could barely walk I mean, really awful, but then it just went everywhere over his body, everywhere. If, if you feel his joints, you can feel them crack. Because he, we do some physio, and there's this really loud crack. His hips and then, that, then I know he'll have pain, because it'll crack, and then he's gonna have pain. In Hornchurch, George is adapting to life with chronic pain. He holds his spoon this way to avoid pressure on his wrist, and getting dressed for school is done sitting down to conserve energy and avoid pain. Bye. Bye. See you later. To make it through the school day, George takes painkillers, but thousands of other children diagnosed with arthritis rely on more potent drugs. Every two weeks you take the Humira and your next one is on Wednesday. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Eli has psoriasis-related juvenile idiopathic arthritis a rare form of the disease that doctors have struggled to find the right drugs for. We went through different medications for him and we had to inject him, um, some horrible injections that made him scream. He's been under quite a lot of different medications to try and find one that will work for him. As of about six month, five, six months ago, he's returned to the diet that previously worked. So Eli's arthritis is, you know, is under control at the moment. The downside is he has to take this medication every two weeks that makes him feel sick. 
in 20 to 30 percent of young people, uh, nausea uh, can quickly develop and, and that can become more of a problem than the arthritis. And we're very much aware of that and we have strategies to help manage uh, the nausea or vomiting that may occur. Uh, and if that then becomes too disabling, then we'll move them on to a different uh, medication. Some of the drugs developed to control arthritis in children hold the risk of long-term side effects, including liver damage and suppression of the immune system. Anita believes the pills Eli takes have contributed to his restricted growth. He's not as tall as his um, younger brother, and his youngest one is about the same height. But also physically, his, um, his bones haven't developed as they would because they haven't got range. So his muscles aren't very developed, he's got muscle wastage. Living with arthritis can be a challenge at any age, but it's especially difficult for children. Along with pain and disability, the disease can affect everything from their education to their relationships. And all of this at the most important time of their development. Go from the top reliably? Yeah. Comfortably? Yeah. Possibly? Yeah. Horribly? No. George struggles with every aspect of his schoolwork because he says his body aches. Sometimes if I'm like doing PE, it might start hurting and I have to stop up, up, because when it starts really hurting. And are there other things at school that it causes problems for other than PE? Yeah, writing after a while, my fingers like get really sore and like they, like, I feel like I just want to drop the pain and give up, but I know that I shouldn't. <laughs> Many children like George struggle to get support. The very idea that a child can suffer from arthritis is so unfamiliar that it can prove difficult to get a diagnosis. Often it takes quite a while for parents to get a diagnosis for their child because um, it comes under the remit of growing pains because you have painful, swollen joints and understanding a child's pain can be quite difficult to, for that child to describe and also for the health professional to really identify. One of the fundamental things is that we need people to be aware of this because early diagnosis and early treatment strategies can really have a significant impact. Despite millions of pounds of investment and the work of some of the world's best medical researchers, the cure for juvenile idiopathic arthritis still hasn't been found. Do you need to give it a hand? Is that so? But luckily for the children affected, with increasing awareness, support and a combination of the right medications, they can now live their lives to the full. He's funny um, and he's very caring and he thinks about what other people are going through. Eli wants to do everything, yeah. he always, and not only does he want to do everything, if you ask him afterwards, how was it, it was fantastic. That's his approach to life. Four. Oh.